Well, good morning. Welcome to Bradley United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Steve McPeak, and I'm the pastor here. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, I'd like to say welcome and glad to have you with us this morning. Also, those of you who are worshiping with us online, welcome. We're so glad that you could be a part of the service today. Um, so just feel free to participate in the comments section. If you have a prayer request or whatever, just put that in the comments, and uh, we will make sure that we pray for those requests that you have. Also, um, we are in the midst of a breakthrough initiative, and that means that we have been asking the congregation to pray a prayer that the congregation has adopted as its prayer. And we ask you to pray that at 9.45 a.m. and 9.45 p.m. So those of you who are that sleep in, you know, you can do it at the p.m. if you stay up late. And those that get up early and go to bed early can do the a.m. So anyway, we, we just hope that you would do that because we believe in prayer here. And we believe that God is going to do something great and tremendous in our midst. And so we're just praying for God's work to be done, for our will to be done, that we would just submit to whatever it is that God has planned for us. Because we know that God is so much greater than us and knows so much more than us that whatever God has planned for us is going to be awesome. And uh, so we just pray uh, that prayer twice a day for God to break through in new ways and um, so I invite you to do that as well. If you don't have the prayer, there's prayer cards that are in the uh, foyers. As you come in to the sanctuary, you can pick up a card from there and take that home and you can um, participate with us. Okay, so let us start off our worship service this morning by saying our, our prayer together. So if you would all stand at this time. Almighty God, may your preferred will break through, usher in, and accomplish through us your new hopes, dreams, and possibilities, both in the life of our church and in our own lives. We surrender our wills for yours in order to fully follow you. Empower us to always answer. Yes, Lord, send me. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Jesus addresses the crowd who came out to see John the Baptist, but John was not there. John was in prison. Along with John, Jesus was one of the many traveling preachers and teachers in his time. He soon became more than just one in the crowd because of what he offered. Jesus offers rest to all those who are struggling hard and carry heavy loads. Jesus not only promised rest, but he practiced rest. In a time of chronic hurry and busyness, his gift and witness of rest is needed like never before. Many people struggle with heavy burdens of which life circumstances have placed upon them. Learning the gifts, excuse me, learning the benefits of rest will help us to desire it more. Those who walk, will, walk with Christ will find rest for themselves.
dim light of our own reason to conduct us to happiness, but that you have revealed in holy scriptures whatever is necessary for us to believe and practice. How noble and excellent are the precepts, how sublime and inter enlightening the truth, how persuasive and strong the motives, how powerful the assistance of your holy religion. Our delight shall be in your statutes, and we will not forget your word. Amen. <coughs> Is, is a it's the you'll know the tune it's come thou fount of every blessing but the words are different so just you'll have to watch the screen to, to read the words but if you want to see the music i think it's 400 in your hymnals is come thou fount of every blessing but um we're doing something different something new so it's it's uh just sing along you'll know the tune take your seats if the children will come forward at this time for the children's message. about rules and regulations today all right what kind of uh, rules do you have in your house or at your school do you can you mention any 
You don't have any rules? Okay. No rules at that house. Anybody else? <laughs> any rules? Like, do you have to eat all your food off your plate? Do you have to make your bed in the morning? Do you have to brush your teeth at night? Oh, wait, I do have one rule. You have one. My mom always says to clean my room. Clean your room. <laughs> do you break that rule? <laughs> Sometimes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Well, why do we have rules? Why do we have rules? Anybody? We have rules so that we don't get hurt, right? So, so that we can so we can live together peacefully. Yeah. And have a clean bedroom. <laughs> Your room's always dirty. From him with no rules? Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, good. Oh, your mom cleans up your room. Oh. Sometimes. Okay. Well, you know, a long time ago, God gave his people, the people of Israel, rules to follow. And he gave it, started out with ten, ten commandments, you know. And then those kept growing, and, and they kept growing until there was over 600 rules that they had to follow. And so, eventually... The people, you know, just they kept pushing uh, God and, and pushing the, the people to where they had to keep making more and more rules. So sometimes these rules were described as a yoke, and the teachers would argue about what they all meant and how best to follow them. It could be very complicated sometimes. And I just lost my picture. There we go. You guys know what a yoke is? You see what's behind those two? What's holding those two together? That's a yoke right there. That's a yoke. You see that? See, that's a yoke. And so there, there's a picture of it without the, the animals. There's one without the animals. Oh, wait, that one's in those bags. Uh-huh. And so a yoke was something that they were, they were yoked to the law at that time, that they were controlled by the law, okay? And so, now, Jesus is, is, has came and reminded the people that it didn't have to be so complicated, that they didn't need 600 rules to tell them what to do. In fact, the yoke could be easy because you just had to remember one rule. You know what that rule is? Can you guess what that rule might be? <laughs> Anybody? Quentin? Love? Yeah, love. Love is the rule. And so, um, after everything said and done, you know, Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so those are the, 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 the rules that if we follow those, then we'll be okay. All the others will fall into place. We won't want to harm other people. We won't want to steal from them. We won't want to hurt them. And so, if we follow those, then we'll be okay. And so, um, love is, is the answer. So I'm going to put a, I got a sticker for you. You want a sticker? Come here. Let me put this on the back of your hand. There you go. Love God, love your neighbor, love people, and love yourself. Okay? Yep. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Put your hand down. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Okay. There you go. Give me your hand. Put your hand out. There you go. Let me put it on the back of your hand. There you go. Love God, love your neighbor, or other people, and love yourself. Love God, love people, and love yourself. There you go. Love God, love people, and love yourself. Okay, can you say it with me? Love God. Love people. Love yourself. Awesome.
So can we say it again? Tell them what it is. Love God. Love God. Love people. Love people. And love yourself. And love yourself. Awesome. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, we just thank you for reminding us that love is the key and that it's an easy burden to bear to love one another as you have loved us. So, Lord, help us to love with all our heart, not only you, but our neighbors and ourselves. Lord, help us to live by your rule of love, that we might love one another and that you would be glorified in and through us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Stand as you're comfortable for the scripture reading. Our lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, starting with verse 16. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
always count on God. Even when times look bleak, struggles are difficult, God is always faithful. And one thing that Jesus has said in the scripture this morning that we read is that Jesus gives rest. He's faithful to give us rest when we need it. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I get pretty tired with work, with, with um, family, with uh, things that are going on around us in the world, and trying to keep up with everything and everybody, grandkids. I don't know. I know why we have kids earlier in life now, so we can stay up with them. But that's one thing that Jesus offers us all, is he offers us a time of rest. Edwin R. Roberts of Princeton Seminary once sat under a pastor who concluded his announcements, I'm not going to take a vacation this summer. The devil never does. Well, Roberts went home and he reread the gospel, uh, the gospels to see what Jesus' attitude is. And he found that Jesus's that, that of Jesus' three years of ministry and active service, there were mentioned ten periods of getting away alone to rest. Whose example are we following? The devil's or Jesus's? In our scripture reading this morning, Jesus invites those who are weary and carrying heavy burdens to come to him, and he will give them rest. Jesus not only promised rest in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, but he practiced rest. Jesus rested often. Rest was part of the natural ebb and flow of his life. Consider the following words found in the Gospels. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. He went into a deserted place. Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. There are many other texts in which Jesus is not healing, he's not teaching, he's not counseling. He is resting. He's taking a break. He's getting away from people who are demanding of his time and of his energy. And he's going off and he's resting, recouping. Getting his strength back. Seeking direction. Praying. He is experiencing what Richard Swenson refers to as margin. Space between his load and his limits. With so much on him, so much expected of him, so much at stake. And so much, or so little of time. How was Jesus able to give himself permission to rest? That was my question. Because I get so caught up in the day-to-day the -day things of ministry, of checking on people and visiting with people and preparing for Sunday's message, preparing, the, picking out songs and writing prayers and, and, and doing all the things that go into doing ministry. That it's like, how can I find time to just get away by myself and, and rest? So I said, well, let's look at Jesus' example. Jesus did that. He found it very important to find time to get away, to go off by himself and to rest. Are you needing a rest this morning, anybody here? Need to get away and just relax. Life is kind of busy right now. And it's like, I just need a, a time out. <laughs> Jesus, give me a time out. So perhaps learning more about what Jesus did 
and how he did take time to rest. I say, consider these possibilities for experiencing such rest as Jesus did. What if Jesus believed that turning it off was as important as turning it on, that you couldn't really turn it on if you didn't really turn it off? What if Jesus believed that there were dimensions of God, personhood, and life, that could only be accessed through leisure and Sabbath. What if Jesus believed that rest did not detract from his creative labor, but rather preserved, replenished, and ignited it? Hmm. Perhaps learning more about the secret power of using or unsung benefits of rest will inspire us to learn a little bit more about resting, taking time to refuel, to re-energize, and become more creative because we have more energy. For us, action-oriented types, there is practical reason to do so. You know, I'm always, I, I find myself always on the go, always wanting to do something. If I'm sitting still, then something's wrong. Is anybody else like that? You just got to go, go, go. Well, first, you know, I just want to look at three different ways, practical reasons to do rest. And first is rest gives us the ability to better handle those times when suddenly, without a moment's notice, we can be hit by the turbulent unexpected. An unwelcome diagnosis. An accident. A family member's pained confession, a friend's difficult request, an employer's unwelcome decision, the sudden death of a friend or a loved one. If we are living from the moment to moment with little rest, or no rest at all, chances are such blows will leave us completely drained. One of the great hidden benefits of a rest habit is that it places us in a better position to withstand the surprise blows of life. To ensure that we uh, will have the strength we need in unforeseen turmoils, we need to learn to rest when you're not even tired. Okay, At such times, you don't necessarily have to force yourself to sleep. You just withdraw from the day-to-day -day activities. You just kind of Close your eyes and just relax, you know, and, and rest. You don't have to actually sleep, but just, just relax and rest yourself. You may do this by meditating, by prayer, uh, by listening to music, if that's, you know, relaxing to you. Practicing yoga, simply being still, as well as countless other ways. In this way, you build up an energy reserve. We are so used to living with the low or no energy that we don't ever imagine living with more energy than we presently need in the moment. Having more energy than you need should not be seen as a luxury. It should be seen as something we, we strive to live with. See it as you would with your retirement, you know. Make deposits. Intentionally store up for the inevitable taxing times of life, because they are coming. There will be days when you get that call, when something's happened. There will be days when you get sick. There will be days when the doctor gives you news that's not good. Those days are coming. But if we store up that energy, if we store up and rest and, and, and store that up, then we have more energy to, to work through it, to get through those difficult days and those difficult times. So don't be afraid to take a rest. A second unsung benefit of rest is that it maximizes energy, turning mere energy into mighty energy. 
You know, I once uh, viewed an online video in which a highly energetic motivational speaker was talking to uh, students and was talking about how they needed to really, you know, get into uh, doing things and, and committing to the projects that they're doing and, and getting better. And, 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 and I was okay with some of that stuff. And, but then he started saying, you need to be like this one person who, who didn't sleep or rest for three days until the project was done. I was like, no, that's, <laughs> that's not going to work. You can't do that. Rest is not an enemy of achievement. Rest is a best friend to achievement. Moreover, rest is an even better friend to high achievement. The difference between mediocrity and optimal achievement is most often di the difference between mere desire and um, burning desire. There's a, there may be a desire, but on the other end, there's a burning desire. And many of us wonder why it is that we often find ourselves settling for less than we started out expecting and desiring with our dreams. Rather than dwindled commitment, the problem may be overcommitment and exhaustive effort. Nonstop drivenness has an unintended merit, growing fatigue. In response to our dwindling energy, we unconsciously begin to downsize our dreams to, to fit our diminished exuberance. And our exuberance shrinks more and more as we get less and less sleep and leisure. We then pile mistaken belief on top of mistaken belief by thinking that more power bars and drinks and coffee will enhance our efforts. <laughs> Nothing inspires when we are drained like a good nap. There's no power drink in the world like rest. Rest restores and revives us so that we can live our optimal lives. Our fullest flourishing and as human beings, requires that we lavishly feed growth and transformation. The unsaluted truth is that such vital nurturing requires only a little, not only a little effort, but also the cessation of effort. We need rest. We need rest. The third uh, part of this Rest en enhances our awareness for effective decision making. Sometimes we are unable to make an important decision because we're so tired, we can't really concentrate, and we're sitting there really struggling trying to answer a, a question, a, make a, a decision. And we keep pondering the decision, and, and it may not be that we just can't make the decision, it may be that we're just tired, that we're just, we're so overwhelmed, and what, could help us make that decision even better is just to go take a nap, to go rest. And then when you wake up, all of a sudden, boom, there's the answer. It's solved. <laughs> Rather than sit there and, and, and keep pounding it out and keep wanting to, 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 to find the answer, wearing ourselves out. Resting gives you the opportunity to restore your mental and spiritual energy. Once your energy is not just back, but enhanced, you are better positioned to decide with keen clarity and confidence. And this is why our United Methodist Book of Discipline um, ministers uh, tells ministers that they need to take time off, to take time away. There's a, it says that we need to go and do a spiritual retreat, some kind of a retreat once a year, and then every four years, Take some uh, sabbatical time to get away. They encourage you to go and rest because they know the demands of ministry are so difficult and overbearing on pastors that pastors burn out and leave ministry. And so they, 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 they want to encourage us to take time away and and I, I'm going to be doing that next week. I won't be here Sunday because I'm going to be leaving for a, an eight-day silent spiritual retreat to where I can get refreshed and revived and, and, and renewed myself. 
And so Reverend Dr. Kirk Byron Jones says, I began preaching at the age of 12, consumed with a burning desire to preach and teach. I zoomed through college and seminary and pastored my first church at the age of 22. A decade later, while working in my third church and finishing my fourth degree, my Zoom turned to gloom. I burned out. One night in the middle of a sermon, I suddenly stopped preaching. I was simply too tired to go on. During my enforced respite from the pulpit, a physician's question, what do you do to relax, and Mark's account of Jesus calming the storm on Galilee after having been asleep in the boat's stern changed my life. Reading this passage during my bout with burnout presented an important element of life in general and ministry in particular that I had ignored rest. We need to look at the example of Jesus as revealed in the scriptures. Between teaching all day long and performing a storm-stopping miracle from the bow of a boat, Jesus sleeps in the back, in the stern of a boat. Jesus stopped and slept. And they asked him, Jesus, how can you sleep? <laughs> We're perishing here. How can you sleep? Well, because Jesus knew how to take a break, how to rest and be restored. And so can you. Jesus invites us all to rest. He says, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We'll now go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm just going to... Um, go through some uh, pastoral prayer, but I'm going to stop at certain places and allow you to lift up prayer concerns that you have this morning for people who are on your heart that you'd like to uh, present to the, to the Lord this morning and, and, and pray for them. So as we go through this prayer, let us lift up our prayers to God. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for this day. For this is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice and are glad in it. Lord, we're so thankful that we can come here to your house of worship. For Lord, we know that not everyone is able to get out of their homes. They're not able to get out of their beds. But yet, Lord, you have seen fit that we have strength enough and health enough to be able to come and be here today to worship you. And so, Lord, we lift up those that are on our hearts this morning before you that are grieving the loss of a loved one. The loss of a home, the loss of a business, the loss of a relationship. We ask you, Lord, to hear our prayers and to respond to our prayers this morning. Lord, we pray for those that are sick and infirm this morning. Those, Lord, that are in the hospitals, those that are at home, those that are in the long-term care facilities. We pray, Lord, that you administer to them right now, O oh God, as we lift them up to you. Leonard.
Lord, we also lift up to you this morning those who are struggling because of their moms or dads are incarcerated in jails. The grandparents are, are raising the grandkids. And so, Lord, we, we lift up to you today those that are incarcerated, those grandparents that are raising their grandchildren. We lift up to you, Lord, those that are addicted to drugs or alcohol or have other addictions that keep them away from their families. We lift them up to you. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for hearing our prayers this morning and for responding to them. Lord, we know that healing is taking place right now. We know, Lord, that restoration is taking place. Lord, we know that you are the one that loves us and wants nothing but the best for each and every one of us here. And so, Lord, I just pray that you administer to those that are gathered here today. Whether they're in pain, I pray that you would touch them and minister to them in their pain. If it's a grief, we ask that you pray for them, that, that you touch them and minister to them in, in their grief. If it is hopelessness, Pray that, Lord, you would give them hope right now. And now, as the children of God, let us all pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Will the ushers come forward at this time as we continue to worship through the giving of God's tithe and our offering this morning?
Please stand. We give thanks, for you call us to rest and lie down in green pastures beside the still waters. You provide a time of rest for our body, soul, and mind. Receive these gifts and bless them so that our joy may translate into the care and joy and rest of your people. Amen. Hey, the kids, are you up here? Are you ready to help with this benediction? All right. Oh. All right. Now this.
is how we do it, remember? We put our arms out. Put our arms out, okay? And repeat after me. Beloveds of Bradley. Beloveds of Bradley. Yoke yourself to Christ Jesus. Yoke yourself to Christ Jesus. And you will find rest in his loving arms. And you will find rest in his loving arms. Amen. May the presence of God, the Creator, give you strength. May the presence of God, the Redeemer, give you peace. May the presence of God, the Sustainer, give you comfort. May the presence of God, the Sanctifier, give you love. Amen. <laughs>